um, traditional learning styles can benefit students because it can help ESL students understand better. It can help any learner understand better. It can improve their team working skills. Our video is mainly about education. Education with traditional learning methods and non-traditional learning methods. The video goes throughout many phases where we show examples of traditional and non-traditional learning methods. In this video, I've learned many things about the ESL program that I didn't know about. Me being an ESL student is different with working with non-traditional learning methods and tra traditional learning methods. It's very different programs that help me understand different ways. In non-traditional learning methods, I understand many things physically. I work with people and students all around my community and it just helps me grow as a person. In the future, it would help me in my career even though I don't know what to study yet or I may know what I want to be, it just helps me differently. I've learned that the ESL program does include many things. It helps students from other places whose first language isn't English and it should also be spread all around. My opinion on this documentary is it should be taking something serious. It is very self-explanatory. We want to get the point around that learning and education is very important in our community and for our human future. How many languages do you speak and what are they? I speak two languages, English and Spanish. Is it beneficial to speak more than one language? I think it is beneficial because ever since I was small, my mom has always told me it's better to know more than one language, especially in the city that we live in because there's a lot of people that only speak Spanish, so it's good to help them out once in a while. Since you attend a non-traditional teaching school, do you think it would have helped you when you were still learning English? I think it would have helped because here uh, you're like around more kids who are more open and they'll, they're, they'll be more open to teach you and help you learn the language so that you don't struggle as much. On the topic of non-traditional teaching, how would you compare it to traditional teachings? One big thing is uh, the way teachers teach here. So uh, non the, the non-traditional teaching school that I go to um, the teachers are more hands-on, they like to help out the students, they ask them if they need anything, rather, and in traditional school, the teachers kind of give lectures and just notes and don't really help out the students since they have more. How do you think non-traditional teaching would have helped in your education as well as learning as a small, a smaller, younger student? I think it would have helped me, uh, it would have helped me develop more in my vocabulary because up to this day there's still some words in English that I don't know so I just say them in Spanish. Your uh, role at ECIC? My role at ECIC is I'm an instructional specialist okay. and that's basically I work at four of the um, choice high schools. Well actually three of them and then one of them is alternative education okay. center. How long have you had your position at ECSD? Uh, my home, I've been working for ECSD for 20, about 23 years. Yep. The position is about nine years as yep. an instructional specialist. What is your greatest accomplishment as a teacher slash admin? Ooh, what my greatest accomplishment. Okay, well my greatest accomplishment was when I was teaching, mm -hmm. um, I was at a, uh, it was Teen Parent Center. Mm -hmm. And with the Teen Parent Center, I, uh, I dealt with uh, teen moms. Mm -hmm. And my goal uh, was to have the teen moms um, basically learn that education is important. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that is an accomplishment because I get to see their, their children now in education and doing really well. And they, um, they're very proud of them. They're yeah. pushing them in science. They're pushing them in math. And so English, all the subjects. And it's just not about sports, but it's about their education. I yeah. think that's my accomplishment. How, are, um, how has the education program evolved since you started working here? 
Okay, since that's, well, the involvement was that we're, um, especially with um, our campus here at New Tech Odessa, mm -hmm. we're a project-based learning, so that's mm -hmm. fairly new in, in this area. Mm -hmm. um, I think the involvement is now we're looking at uh, focusing on the learners and what their needs are. Mm -hmm. um, basically, um, uh, differentiating is how they're learning, what they, you know, how they learn, what we can do to, uh, to best help them learn, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be through collaboration, mm -hmm. Um, sometimes we're doing like stations and having um, independent work um, or collaborating in teams as we do here, but I think that's evolving and moving forward. Okay, what are some of the struggles that you, uh, sorry, what are some of the struggles independent learners may have? Okay, so yes. some of the struggles that independent learners have. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about independent, I think the thing about it is structure. A lot mm -hmm. of times we, they don't, um, they don't know about the structure and we have to teach them structure. We need to teach them how to be flexible. We need to teach them how to be adaptable. Um, a lot of times when they're independent um, uh, learners, it's, it's they want to do everything by themselves, but they have to learn that the world is, is collaborative, especially in the workforce, that um, you're going to be working with others and how do you how do you work best with them, even if you don't get along with them. Sometimes you have to really just focus on the work and, and the task at hand mm -hmm. and um, I think that's basically what, what they struggle with and then the mm -hmm. pro procrastination sometimes <laughs> happens mm -hmm. <laughs> so they have to learn to time a lot of it's time management mm -hmm. and um, but it doesn't just necessarily fall on, on learners as well I mean, it can fall on adults as, as well you know um, how can learning as a team better help students okay learning as a team is going to help them especially um, be able to um, ask each other questions, work together, mm -hmm. uh, solve problem, uh, problem solve mm -hmm. um, as a team, um, just um, basically know how to communicate with, with each other mm -hmm. uh, in a professional manner. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and basically just um, remember, notice that it's just not an I in, in the team, that it's actually a team. Mm -hmm. How can students prepare uh, for college through the work week or in the working force? Okay, how can students prepare for college in the working force? In the working force. Um, so, how can students prepare for college? Well, a lot of it, collaborating is a big piece of that. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to problem solve is is really big out in the where they want you to in the workforce because mm -hmm. a lot of times you, they are going to give you a task and they can't micromanage you, so you have to be able to figure out what what to do, um, you know, you sometimes you have to be self-starters mm -hmm. um, because they can't like walk you through everything. Uh, at the beginning, they can, but eventually they're going to release you to mm -hmm. to do that. So, work uh, college-wise, um, when you're in college, um, a lot of the professors. I mean, it's like you you you, you watch a video, mm -hmm. take notes, do your work. Um, so you have to, and then time management is a big piece. That's I think that's that's the piece that college is going to help you with. And now that some of the colleges are going with eight weeks, mm -hmm. I mean that's even that's even like that's scary. that is scary because you're like, oh, I have to complete all this this content in this amount of time. So time management is a key. So. Yes. How can a specific learning style benefit over another? Mm -hmm. That was a little bit controversial. So I'm talking mainly about PBL. Okay. as opposed to uh, more lecture style. Okay. Well, how can PBL? Okay, so something, mm, that's, that's a little tough. Basically what it's gonna uh, amount to is your own personal learning style. Mm -hmm. But you're, um, so if you're coming to a project-based learning and you're not used to collaboration, you're used to independent, and that's how your learning style is, this is, this is gonna be a struggle. Yes. So the, the, I think the big thing is adaptability. So you have to be able to adapt um, wherever you are. So even if you like, if you don't like lecturing, and it's not part of it, like you like collaborating, you like, but then you have to sit there. You have to adapt. So I think the p big piece there is adaptability, flexibility, in order to go from from one learning style to another. I think um, I think there's not a one fits all yes, type of learning. I think everything fits everybody. We all each have a little piece of that, but I think there's some that stand out more that we learn. Mm -hmm. We just have to be adaptable and, uh, you know, learn.
learn it in the different styles. Through researching teaching as a whole and the way students can be helped by the design of the physical school and the type of schooling techniques, I've discovered that teachers are overall divided in the way that teaching should be approached. While the overall design of the school and learning environment seem to be universal in beliefs, teaching styles were one for debate. The controversy surrounding teaching, how teaching should be done, while it may seem in a school to someone outside of the job, is shown in the interviews with the teachers. I was really surprised the issue is considering this polarizing and I thought teachers would have a general consensus that was altered in very small ways. After speaking with the teachers, however, it has become apparent that the ways that teachers teach is very touchy subject. Like many others, I was unaware of the subject. This subject caused controversy. I personally think that this controversy stems from administration efforts. However, I've not been told anything to suggest that theory. To help students, however, the subject must be openly discussed in a way that reflects the modern needs of children and can better help students integrate easier into the workforce. Please state your name and occupation here at OC. My name is Leticia Casillas and I serve as the budget and grant accountant here at Odessa College. How does this community college help with ESL learners? On the campus of Odessa College, we have the Transitional Learning Center, which is designed to help adults learn the English, English language at no cost to the student. Do these grants help improve the education ESL learners receive? Absolutely. Uh, currently, one of our grants uh, not only helps the student um, help pay for their classes, but we now offer um, integrated education and training classes that allow these students to acquire employable skills while receiving their ESL classes. Are you familiar with non-traditional teaching methods? Yes, um, I currently have a student that attends a local high school that utilizes non-traditional teaching methods. Have you seen any improvement in these learners? Yes, I, I have noticed a lot of improvement uh, on, with my student. He. Um, his personality has flourished. Uh, I've noticed that his self-confidence is, um, he believes in himself a little bit more than he normally did. And his speaking skills have really um, taken off. Uh, I've noticed a, a lot of improvement, yes. What is your role at UTVB? I'm a professor. I'm the William and Ordell Watts professor. And how long have you held this position at UTBB as a professor? Well, I think I'm in my third year as the William and Ordell Watts professor. I mean, I've been at UTBB for 15 years, the year that I'm in right now. What is your greatest accomplishment as a teacher? As a teacher? Well, if you had said my greatest accomplishment at UTBB, I would have said the free store, because I established the free store at UTBB. That was my greatest accomplishment. But as a teacher? Probably mentoring undergraduate researchers. What is your approach to students who may not believe in their abilities? That's, that's a hard one. Um, as a teacher, there's really not much I can do but besides give people opportunity and access. It's really up to them as an individual to take those opportunities and take you know, and take advantage of that access. We can open the door, but we can't push people through. How do you think that writing centers provide an additional level of understanding for the student, in particular those with special needs such as deafness and learning disabilities? Well, the great thing about writing centers is that they're individual. They're individualized. When you're in a classroom, I don't know how many you have in your classroom, 20, 30, 40 people. That's too many for a teacher, literally, to get that one-on-one -on -one with each individual student. So the strength of the writing center is that individual approach, and also some writing centers use a small group approach, um, where you know, the benefit is you have that one-on-one. -on -one. The um, conversation, the instruction can be individualized to the, to the learner. How can students improve their understanding of English outside of school? Just read. That answer is easy. And I would say read books, not read on your phone, but I suppose it's better reading on your phone than nothing, but I have had some conversations with some people. We actually had a poet um, came to the campus last week and on Monday, and he read a poem about, and it was called Smash Your Kindle, because I really think that you, you, the key is read books, like real books, paper. Okay, um, what do you believe, based on your research and personal beliefs, has been done to help students with disabilities? In general, it goes back to the individual 
individualized instruction, finding out what works for a certain person. Um, for tutoring and writing centers, the tutor needs to have like what I sort of call a bag of tricks. And this is in my book, Writing Centers and Disability, too. Um, having techniques, having tricks to work with a person. If something doesn't work, you try something else. If that doesn't work, you try something else. That's the, that's the beauty of individualized instruction. When a teacher's in front of a classroom, they need to just teach one way. They need to teach everybody the same way because there's just not time if there's 30 people in the class to teach the matter 30 different ways. Okay, I found I found the article. It was in the um, it says Praxis, a writing center journal, disabilities in the yes. writing center. Yes, that's sort of like an overview that I found with different disabilities. And there's listed different techniques that you can try, other than just randomly try different techniques with a person. You might as well try the ones that have already been mentioned in the literature that maybe work for a particular population. Um, I don't I don't have it in front of me, so I have it memorized. You can can take a look and see the different disabilities and what techniques have been tried. I think in learning disabilities, maybe almost all the techniques are, are checkmarked. <laughs> learning disabilities are very are very complicated and each person manifests them different. We're just going to try different techniques until we find something that works for that person. We've got to be flexible. This one is kind of just like, I forgot to email it to you, but you said in that journal that you believe that there should be more studies based on that. Uh, what do you think can be done, like, in classrooms now for that? Well, I don't I don't know about in classrooms because I mostly what I know about is writing center. Really hasn't been a lot with um with autism or Asperger's. There's people talk about it a lot but there hasn't really been study. Um the, and also that there's the two number one disabilities with college students are are depression and A D D and ADHD. Maybe one study on that and Really, we need, we need more studies on the most common disabilities. You know, there's a lot of studies on deafness, that I'm, you know, I'm responsible for some of them. There aren't a lot of deaf students that we see. We, you know, I think, I can't tell you the statistic, but it's probably in the article about how many students have mental illness and ADHD and stuff like that. It's a big number. 19%. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. So you have, um, you know, that's almost two out of ten. So just, I mean, you can just think about your class that you're in at school. Maybe not all the people disclose their disabilities. Okay, so let's say you are a teacher. You're going to have students with disabilities in your class. Like it or not, whether or not you're prepared, they're going to be there, so you might as well be ready. There are many things I've learned about the education system, not just about a particular city or state, but as a whole. The teaching method of a repeated cycle of lecture and then a unit test, often called the authority slash lecture method, has been adopted as the main teaching style of many public American schools. This type of teaching has become the main method because of two things. America is always growing in population, and this method is the only one suitable to teach multiple students at once, and two, because it is rather economically efficient. Other methods such as hands-on learning require a smaller classroom typically smaller than 25 students, hence why non-traditional teaching schools usually have limited spots. However, there is one problem with every method you will find out there, even the more successful ones. None of them appeal to every single student. Every student has their own way of learning whether it is kinesthetic, visual, or lecture-based teachings. Now what I'm proposing won't happen in an instant, maybe not even a decade. But American schools should start making an effort to appealing to every student's method of learning. It may be costly and it may take trial and error, but in the end, we will have a smarter nation.